You can think about socialism as democracy for the economy, an economy that takes planning and forethought and doesn't just leave wealth distribution to the invisible hand of the market, which in case you were wondering, looks like this for the 99% of us. I don't know why you attempt to tell people stuff like that when the history of Sweden contradicts that very statement. Because if we look at history, between 1870 to 1960, Sweden had extremely low levels of government regulation, so it was a strongly self-regulating market economy. It had low levels of government interference, it had a limited small government, it had low tax rates, it had a strong private banking system, it never had the big extensive welfare state, and most importantly, it became the fourth richest nation per capita GDP in the world, and proven by the Gini coefficient, it had high levels of equality. Now, the reason why that completely contradicts this very statement that it's, you know, a middle finger to, you know, the rest of the people to the 99% is because, well, it was a strongly capitalist-based system back then. Um, and even with regards to Hong Kong, it was the same story. Hong Kong between 1961 to 1997 closed the wealth gap between the rich and poor proven by the Gini coefficient. Most importantly, in 1950 it had less than 5,000 for an average household income. By the year 1997 it would have something well over 38,000 for an average household income. In other words, the rich grew richer and the poor grew richer. In 1950, most of society, the vast majority of society, was living in dire poverty. They were living in extreme poverty. The poverty in Hong Kong was extreme. It was a tiny, small fishing village. They had practically no natural resources, right? Despite all of that, and, of course, bordering a communist country where they could not trade through a communist country, that being China. You have to remember that Hong Kong was forced to, you know, trade through its own small port. Now, for something that was a tiny, small fishing village with practically no natural resources, not sitting in one of the greatest geographic, geographical positions in the world either, despite all of that and having no minimum wage, how the hell did they go from less than 5,000 for an average household income to more than 38,000 plus? That's the average household income. That essentially means the average person of society did become richer. So it, it, it wasn't a middle finger to the 99%. That's just factually incorrect and it's ignoring history. No one said there was ever a perfect system. No one said you would ever get rid of exploitation completely. No one said you would ever get rid of rich and poor people completely. No one said you would ever get rid of, you know, corruption completely. That just isn't real realistic. Most importantly is the, the very issue that, you know, the, the, the caged housing was rapidly in decline before 1997. That was before 1997. And all of a sudden, with government intervention, there became a serious problem. And that's a whole other topic I'll go into, perhaps in a separate video, to explain the reason for why that is. Mo and, 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 and on top of that, the Kowloon's walled city was never part of Hong Kong. Right? This is something people don't get. It's not as simple as saying, oh well, you'll have a free market and you just won't have the rule of law, etc. It doesn't work like that. Um, Hong Kong was not anything at all to do with the Kowloon Walled City and the Kowloon Walled City was nothing at all to do with China. So China and Hong Kong be you know, came to an agreement to have it demolished for the sake of human rights and rightly so. But it was not part of Hong Kong. So whenever you see people try to, you know, turn to the Kowloon Walled City and blame that in the free market, it's just, it's irrational because it had nothing to do with Hong Kong. And that's something that a lot of people don't understand. So there's the, the issue with this argument on this 99% and, you know, oh well, they'll stick the middle finger up at the rest of them and, and that's it. It just isn't like that. Um... And, if anything, 
that is basically what socialism has done in Venezuela. Um, and it is socialist. <laughs> and, and Nicolas Maduro has essentially stuck his middle finger up at people rummaging through bins. And now compare that to any capitalist economy that you have seen and you will see a massive difference. <laughs> the poor today are living far better off than what they were in 1950. Miles better off. Um, and that's what contradicts, obviously, that statement. Um, it's irrational. 